What do math, smoke, wasted materials, and lots and lots of steps in a project have in common? These are all things I'm gonna show you how to avoid with five simple tips in Lightburn today. The first tip is gonna help you deal with projects that might use multiple materials. So you may want to bring in the entire project, whether that's to maintain your sizing, or because it's just simpler to have one project with everything in it, and be able to cut pieces individually without needing to set layers to input and output every time. What you need to do to do this is to turn off beginner mode. So beginner mode might seem like something that is very useful if you're getting started because it makes everything simpler, right? Beginner mode removes access to the cut selected graphics feature, which is one of my favorite in Lightburn and one you're definitely going to want to use. So to access this feature, we're going to go in and turn off our beginner mode. To do that, we click our gear icon and then we simply toggle beginner mode off. Once we do that, you will see that we have two new options here in our laser menu. The first one is cut selected graphics and the other one is use selection origin. So to see what I mean, if we look at this project where I have a sign and potentially a name that I wanna cut out with something different, and I just wanna cut this welcome because I'm cutting it from acrylic. So I'm gonna grab that. New in 1.7, I have the box is highlighting so I can actually see the entire green box, which is really cool. And now that I have that selection, I'm using cut selected graphics and you can see that my little origin dot is aligned to my welcome. I'm gonna move that to the top left so that it is just set up for that welcome. This means that I don't need to change any of my outputs and I can go ahead and send just this to the laser. So if we preview this, you can see that only the welcome sign is sending to the laser. Awesome, right? Definitely turn off beginner mode. My second tip is for those of you who are really struggling to set your interface up in millimeters per second. Now I know that you might want to have it in inches because you're much more comfortable in the English system than the metric system, but I'm always gonna recommend for CO2 owners especially that you work in millimeters per second because most of the settings that you're going to see if someone is giving you starter settings are going to be in millimeters per second. So when you're set in millimeters per second, you might get frustrated because you might be thinking about the size that an item should be. Well, I'm gonna show you a tip that will help you to access inches without needing to change your interface. So let's select this shape and let's say that I know that I want this shape to be five inches wide and I have my aspect ratio locked so that I will not distort the shape. I'm just going to change the entire shape. I can type in five I N into this and it will automatically convert it to inches. So let's say that I wanted it to be a multiple instead. I could go ahead and change it to 50%. So now it's gonna be 50% smaller. Let's say that I want it to be 300%. So I can change that there as well. I also can do math in here. So I could say I want two inches plus 0.25 inches, and it will do the math for me. Are you enjoying these tips, but you're a more visual learner? I have a download for you, so go check that out in the description. My third tip for you will help you have cleaner cuts while also potentially reducing smells, especially if you are venting out a window or somewhere where you might have some smell coming back into your room, and that is to use a start delay on your laser. So to access this, you're gonna go into your laser settings. So you're gonna grab the wrench and screwdriver icon and you are going to see in this other options area, a start delay. What this does is it allows the fans to kick on fully before the laser starts firing. This is especially great if you're using really high power for some reason, because you know that your air is gonna be firing fully by the time that your job starts. I use a 12 second delay. You can choose whatever you like. And I also have an end delay just to continue to push that smoke out when the job finishes. Tip number four is one of my favorites and I only recently learned about it. Have you ever run into a job where something doesn't cut quite all the way through? Let's say you're using plywood and you happen to run into one of those pesky glue pockets or your settings just weren't quite right for some reason. You know it didn't cut fully but you haven't taken it out of the bed yet. That is key. You have not removed it from its exact position. In this case, you can use a start from feature that exists in the preview window. So we're gonna go into the preview window 
And right now you don't see this option. But once I put my cursor onto the path and I'm looking through how this job is cutting, you can see that I have a new button that says start here. So let's say that my rectangle cut out fine, but my circle got stuck right there. And that last part just didn't quite cut out. I can choose this start here button and you're gonna see three options. Start the job on the laser from here, which means it'll send directly to the laser. I never recommend using that. I always send to the Ruida controller and work from there or save the job for running later from here. So I use the send job to laser from here option. And once you click that, you'll have the option to name it differently so that you don't override your current file and then you can rerun exactly from there. So if you have one of those problems, you can fix it before needing to trash that material. Tip five is also going to help you eliminate waste. And that is to use snapping and the optimization settings to remove double lines in your cuts. This is great if you're doing something nested. So we are going to draw a couple shapes and nest them and then remove the extra lines so that they only cut once. Let me show you. We're gonna create a triangle for this example and create multiples and then show you how you can snap them together using snapping tools and then how you remove those overlapping lines in your cut settings. So let's create a hexagon and then we'll go into our shape properties to make it a triangle. So two ways that you can take a shape and make it different sizes in 1.7. I can either change the number of sides using the shape properties panel, or I can use the command key on a Mac and the control key on a PC to create this little purple handle here. And once I grab that purple handle, I can change the number of sides by dragging up or down. Pretty cool, right? To really demonstrate this easily, I need to show you in a different shape. So we're gonna actually change this shape to be a hexagon. And we are going to create multiple hexagons and then we're gonna snap them together so that we can see how the laser is traveling across the paths with the optimization settings on and with the optimization settings off. The first thing we do is we will create multiple hexagons. And now we wanna start snapping them together. So I could try to line them up perfectly. So let's say that I want to line this one up here along this line. But you can see I'm imperfect at this. So even though it looked good from far away, you can see I'm not perfectly lined up. So what do we do? We're gonna go into our gear icon and choose in units and grids, snap to objects. Once we have enabled that, then there's still other things that we need to do. So even though I turn that on, you can see it's still not doing anything. And that's because I need to enable it on the screen as well. And the way that I do that is I hover my cursor at a point until I see this crosshair. Once I see the crosshair, then I can move the objects together. And you can see when it snaps and sort of locks in, it doesn't wanna move anymore. Now, if I tried to do that over here, when I'm moving here, it's not gonna snap. It needs to be same to same. So I'm trying to align this line with this line. So I'm gonna grab that there and pull it over and snap. And now I wanna grab this one and bring it down and snap it there. And then I'll do the same thing over here. And let's put this one here. Now that I've lined up the hexagons and they're all snapped together, I should be feeling good, right? But Lightburn doesn't inherently choose to remove those overlapping lines and to not cut them again. So let's see what that looks like in the preview. So we cut our first hexagon, we travel across, and then we cut that same line again. We definitely do not want that. So what we need to do is we need to go into our optimization settings within our laser window, and we're gonna choose to remove overlapping lines. Now, when we go back into our preview, and we cut our first hexagon, and then we travel to our second, and we didn't recut that line. Watch, it's gonna travel across instead of cutting that line again. So now, not only have, are you not double cutting, you're likely reducing the time because you're not traveling in paths that you don't need to travel again. I'm gonna give you one more bonus tip for sticking around. Have you ever had a design like this where you have multiple things all hanging out together and the idea of needing to go try to grab each piece individually is a little bit daunting? 
Well, you can grab every piece that exists on a specific colored layer by using your shift key and clicking that layer. Everything now on that layer is grabbed. You can see this because I can remove all those purple things and I can either move them, group them, change the layer that they're on. So I can do that just by using shift and clicking that layer. So that's my bonus tip for you today. Those are my five tips for you today. I hope that these help you to avoid math and smoke and wasted materials and overly complicated projects. If you're enjoying this, stick around, more Lightburn tutorials to come.